sandworm Christmas wreath. Once again, I come to you with pool noodles and special guest star, pipe insulation. This is not pool noodle, it's pipe insulation. It's less dense and it's a smaller diameter. Um, so we're gonna make a wreath, obviously. And I wanna see how big do I want my wreath to be. That is heat bonded, ready to go. There'll just be less tension on it if it's just a little bit larger of a loop. Let it cool down. There we go. And now I have a nice circle. I have a nice circle. That's going to be for my wreath. Yeah. Ah, that much. 14 inches, maybe. Yeah, 14 inches, maybe 12 inches. It's a mystery. We'll never know. And they have a snout. They have one mouth that opens up and like shows you the other mouth. So I'm actually going to cut this out also. In order to make each of these be like the top of the mouth and the bottom of the mouth. See that? Now I can open that up. All right, so let's get some heat on this. I'm just warming it. I'm using the heat gun to make a thinner neck right there. That way it thins out a little bit. Okay. I'm going to heat this up and seal it together. There we go. It's kind of nice. Same to the other side. All right, so now I've got that much of him done, and I'm actually going to um, cut this a couple times to get a nice curve here. So I'm going to use the table to force this mouth open more. I'm just going to hit it with a heat gun while it's open like that. Okay, now I have a much more open mouth. I'm going to go inside. And I'm allowing that material to condense. So it stays open and I have room to put a second piece of pipe in there in order to make the other head that comes out. All right, so this is a fast version of, of making the head. Basically, you make a split to open up, and that gives you kind of a log nose. And then I cut wedges in there, and then you heat it up. And by sealing those, you get two rounded ends, which makes a nice snout. And that mouth is a little bit open. It's not wide open like the other one, but that's pretty good. And it actually has raised up eyes on it. So um, I'm going to have to build a little piece onto this head. I'll use another piece of this foam. All right, there we go. Now that's on there. And I can just use my knife and just whittle that eye shape in. Okay, now the back. 
All right, so there we go. Look at that head we made. Very simply, very fast. I'm cutting another piece, because uh, this head is a little bit larger back here too. I'm gonna bevel all of these edges underneath. See how that's beveled? Now all these edges are thin. So when I put this on, it won't take very much at all to get that to melt down. Now I have our two sandworm heads right there. And this one's a little more pelican-y than I want it to be. I'm going to add a little piece right here, too. Let's do that again. I want it a little bit more... Um, Spuds McKenzie and a little less Flamingo. Bull Terrier. He is a Bull Terrier. head shape happier with that coming out of there those are my two sandworm heads and now this guy we're going to attach over this all right so I want this to be in here somewhere I'm gonna cut this so I can easily attach it Yeah, I think I want my sandworm head inside, and right about there is where it's going to be best. my attached sandworm head. Now I'm going to uh, uh, make it look like the, his body curls all the way around by attaching this um, and that'll take some finagling with the heat gun off the edge of the table and just some trickery. Actually, I'll do it this way first. So I want to hide this joint. So where do I put this? bring this around to hide that joint. That's where. Okay, so this is me using the heat bonding technique. All polyethylene foam can be heat bonded, um, where you apply heat to both sides and press them together really fast. That is the basis of getting this guy together. Polyethylene foam does not glue very well, 
but to bond it together with heat uh, works really amazing. It allows you to do amazing things. Practice it. I think so, but I'm not a fan of the angle of the head. I want it to come out a little bit more now that I've got it here. Just cutting that head off and I'll twist it the way I want it and I'll put it right back on. And I need a little shark fin right here. I'll do that out of uh, EVA foam. Okay, this will be the little shark fin that they have on the back of their head, kind of right here. We're going to use hot glue to hold this on. So these creatures have pretty prominent lips. So I'm actually going to cut this insulation in half and make my lips out of this. Okay, the backer rod is actually um, very soft polyethylene. Uh, it's not very dense at all, so it really can evaporate with the heat gun because you can't direct it. I'd also be shrinking down all the other stuff. I'm using the soldering iron here to just warm those two pieces up as I press them together. Um, that's a much more precise heat application, and it works really well uh, for tight things like adding a lip. Turn the heat on my gun way down. So I'm going to try and do the lip for this one with, uh, with this, with, with hot glue. And I think that could make a nice lip all the way around. Ideally, you would have white plastic forks. They're cheap. But I have these uh, clear plastic forks. That's my teeth. Okay, so let's check this hot glue. I don't see it melting in, so I think that's going to be fine to use for the lips on this head. All right, so I was pretty iffy on these heads and how they were turning out. Um, until uh, putting the teeth on. Um, those peggy teeth that, uh, that these creatures have, um, the, the fork tines just do a really great job. It'll make your life easier if you just get white fork forks uh, to begin with. I think they're the cheapest kind, but these are what I had on hand. Um, and again, I'm laying down hot glue and pushing the teeth into it for gums. All right, so that is his mouth. Ah! Teeth. So many teeth. And I use, I'm using these bigger ones over here for him. And uh, once again, I will do a hot glue line in here. And I am really not worried about them all pointing the same direction. The, this guy has, there's a lot of slop in these Nightmare Before Christmas designs which uh, they're, they're well designed but they're also forgivingly designed you know no right angles follow that rule and uh, you'll do okay yes I should have attached all these teeth and the lips before I put it on let me be an example not a role model <laughs> That's so fun. Okay, so now I'm going to put a little bit of glue on this guy just so when I put him in there, he stays in there. Look at 
the ratio for this is one part contact cement, five parts xylene. And I set this aside, let it dry, and I'll come back to it. I'm going to paint this with black flex seal. Okay, now I let that dry. So now we paint this sucker. Looks like some of my comments are misaligned with the video. I'm afraid it's too late for me to fix that into the process. But uh, here I'm, I'm painting, uh, and I just have uh, white latex house paint. Uh, I wanted that because it's nice and thick. If I'm painting black, uh, white over black, uh, you want to use a paint that has a lot of opacity to it. Um, and the house paint does have that. Um, and I, I'm just hitting everything that, that needs to be white on the heads first. Uh, always try to paint the inside of something first and then start working your way to the outside. If I painted the outside first, I couldn't pick it up to paint the head. So uh, that's why I'm just working in order. And you can see that I have a sponge brush there. And that sponge brush just helps me do those wide stripes kind of in one go, which is very helpful. And then that little brush um, I use to get underneath where those white bits would be uh, because the sponge brush just wouldn't fit without getting on everything else. And it, it's very forgiving as far as how wide the stripes are and how far apart they are because, again, there's a lot of slop in this design. And it just, uh, it's, it's a great look, but it's a little bit of a sloppy look. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, I'm just working one color all the way through. And then when I'm done with this white, I'll go in with my other colors. Yep. Sure is black and white. I'm about to finish up with the white here, and then I'll move on to other colors. Um, the The color scheme is actually, it's black and white, and it's pretty desaturated, all the other colors. Um, this being a Christmas piece, I brightened it up a little bit, but we will dull it uh, afterwards. This is, uh, that's just my mask paint right there the magenta color i'm mixing up a pink for the gums and for a little bit inside of the mouth and i'm using that little brush there to apply no big secrets he also has some weird pink dots on the interior nose so i added those that guy is ready and now this is that the blue of his lips which is uh what a weird art choice, but it, it kind of works out. And then, so that's a doll eye that I got from Hobby Lobby. Uh, just a teddy bear eye that I shove in there. And I did the eye on both sides. And I'm using a little bit of that blue just around the eye because that's a very, it's kind of a dirty attachment point. And the other eye is a, a different eye it's right there on the table, and I just spray paint it red. All right, so the only thing that I have done is, remember the eye that I spray painted red? I just hot glued it on where it goes. I put it in the white van because that's where it is on all the art. And now I need to stain it because these guys are not clean black and white. They're pretty dingy. Uh, and this is a brown patina spray paint, which is going to just age this guy up a little bit. This is a brown patina spray um, from Sculpt Nouveau, and I, I really like it. It's kind of replaced glossy wood tone for me, which is much harder to get these days. Uh, I don't want to pay 20 bucks a can for that. Uh, this stuff is reasonable, but it's also it's got a nice translucency. Uh, I mean, you can see the color through it, but dirtying this up is pretty important to this particular prop. Otherwise, it's just too bright. All right, so that is my Beetlejuice Sandworm Christmas wreath. If you wanted to, you could give him a little Santa hat or whatever, but uh, I kind of want the sandworm heads to show. So and you can hang it, you know, whatever angle you want for the 
heads maximum effect. But Merry Christmas! Go make stuff! Okay, so thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I hope everybody has a happy holiday. This is my... Um, these are my Patreon supporters. And uh, I cannot thank them enough. They keep the shop in necessary supplies and toilet paper and all the things that we need uh, in order to continue. Uh, I actually just got some gear uh, based off of Patreon. And uh, I'll probably show that off in a live feed here soon. If you can, hop over and watch the Stilt Beast live channel when you guys get a chance. Happy holidays. Go make stuff.